This is Stephen Frampton. Welcome to my Outlook report for July 2020. I will review July's planetary conditions for you, but I would like to cover some important material before that. Remember that the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, the coming together of these planets at the same point in the zodiac, in January, triggered the economic crisis that we've been predicting for years. That same Saturn-Pluto conjunction also describes the ongoing global coronavirus pandemic. And generally, the most unfortunate have been hardest hit. Coronavirus has spread like wildfire in nursing homes, uh, in uh, labour camps, prisons, uh, underprivileged or marginalised underserved communities suffering from poverty and limited access to health care. Now, the recent Saturn-Pluto conjunction occurred in Capricorn, which is a cardinal sign of the zodiac. And don't worry too much at this point about cardinality and what, what that means, but I want to make this point that uh, Capricorn is a cardinal sign of the zodiac. And when you look back in history, which is always the best way to understand what's occurring now, um, especially if you are analysing conditions astrologically, because you basically analyse the conditions now uh, with your understanding of historical conditions and what occurred uh, at different times in history because you learn that way to understand uh, what the planets uh, symbolize, indicate, describe, create uh, or uh, activate. OK, I think to be a good astrologer, uh, we do need uh, uh, a keen interest in uh, history, just as we need a good understanding of what's occurring uh, politically, economically, etc. at the current time. But I looked back in history at uh, previous pandemics, the, the largest pandemics, uh, HIV, AIDS, uh, 25 to 35 million uh, lives. Uh, that began under a Saturn-Pluto conjunction in a cardinal sign of the zodiac as well. I looked at the Spanish flu, 40 to 50 million lives uh, caused by the H1N1 influenza A virus. Uh, that occurred under a Saturn-Pluto conjunction in a cardinal sign of the zodiac. I looked at the smallpox pandemic. That also occurred under, under a Saturn-Pluto conjunction in a cardinal sign of the zodiac. I looked at the bubonic plague or the Black Death, uh, 200 million lives, 1347, occurred under a Saturn-Pluto conjunction in a cardinal sign of the zodiac. This is William Lilly, one of the world's finest uh, astrologers ever. Uh, he predicted the bubonic plague. Now, in addition to coronavirus and the economic crisis, the murder of George Floyd uh, by uh, police officers in the United States has shocked the world, uh, bringing attention to inequality and uh, systemic racism. Now, I've made this point before. Uh, last year, 2019, Jupiter was in his own sign of the zodiac, Sagittarius. He also rules Pisces. Okay, 
and Jupiter in his own sign was in very good condition as Jupiter is the planet of uh, expansion uh, abundance growth opportunity we saw incredible growth in uh, the economy not in every country obviously but in the United States and in, in a number of countries there was good economic growth and it's certainly in the United States the economic growth uh, and the stock market seem to be uh, incredible the problem with Jupiter in Sagittarius is that in my opinion he's always exaggerated when he's in Sagittarius he's always puffed up and the thing is that Jupiter moves into Capricorn after uh, Sagittarius so this is something that happened uh, late last year uh, Jupiter moved into Capricorn and the bubble burst or was bound to burst which it did in, in January and the reason for that just technically is Jupiter's in dreadful condition in Capricorn so you see a great reverse in fortune and I uh, I'm sure that the future condition uh, of uh, Jupiter will uh, to a great extent or certainly a significant extent will describe uh, the uh, uplift in the economy all right uh, now uh, the other consideration is that Jupiter uh, has been at the same point in the zodiac as Pluto so Saturn joined Pluto in January all of these things were triggered and Saturn then moved out of the way uh, having done what he did and, and Jupiter moved in in lousy condition expanding the problem so Jupiter will always expand but when he's in poor condition he's inclined to expand something that we see as discordant but if you think about it in terms of just nature a rationally uh, discord represents a tremendous opportunity okay uh, but really I think that Jupiter conjunct Pluto in Capricorn um, because Jupiter is in poor condition particularly this really uh, brings to the surface uh, the truth right uh, and part of the truth is uh, Black Lives Matter this is the United States chart uh, for the day of uh, George Floyd's murder and as always it describes what's occurring the homeland in the United States or in this chart is uh, ruled by Mars the fourth house here of the homeland begins in Aries and the ruler of Aries is Mars so Mars in the natal chart here at 21 degrees of Gemini rules the homeland okay the United States territory and uh, the movement of Neptune up in the sky here in Pisces this year and into next year uh, puts Neptune at a 90 degree angle to Mars in the United States chart so you're talking about great confusion and disillusionment uh, at home a lot of smoke and mirrors uh, very difficult to understand what's going on uh, what needs to be done etc uh, and people are clearly very upset uh, it's also very much affecting the youth I'm concerned that we are underestimating the effect of all of this including coronavirus and uh, the economic crash I'm concerned that we're underestimating uh, by far the effect upon children uh, in the United States 
children are ruled by Mars in the United States uh, chart. The other thing is I am baffled by the sort of economics of the real estate market uh, globally, but also in the United States. I'll be making some comments about that a little later in this presentation. But the presence of Neptune in a discordant aspect to Mars in the United States chart uh, indicates to me that there's something very odd that we don't know about pertaining to real estate and real estate values. OK, but anyway, this chart uh, at the time of George Floyd's death shows uh, that there was an act of violence at home. Uh, Mars up in the sky, the planet of aggression, violence, was here at eight degrees of Pisces. And you can see that that puts him in an exact 90 degree angle or discordant aspect to Uranus, a disruptive, revolting Uranus. And so we had this revolting act of violence uh, on our own soil. All right. And, you know, we could talk for hours about everything else that's going on in this chart, but I wanted to just make this point uh, and uh, talk a little bit more about the astrological conditions uh, in the United States or for the United States at the time of this uh, dreadful uh, murder. We profile and predict groups and nations just as easily as uh, we profile individuals like you or me. Uh, however, it's far more challenging to change the fate of a group than that of an individual. How do you influence the hive mind? How do you raise awareness of collective conditions? to avert challenges and embrace opportunity? Uh, I think the answer is with great difficulty. And really remembering that knowledge is power, we need to recognize that at this time, we face an epistemic crisis, which is a crisis of knowledge. We profile and predict groups and nations just as easily as uh, we profile individuals like you or me. Uh, however, it's far more challenging to change the fate of a group. If you remember uh, the Pluto problem, the, or the problem that began with Saturn conjunct Pluto in January occurred in a very, very sensitive, well, that's a good way, of, nice way of putting it, a very uh, discordant or malefic point, let's say, say uh, in the United States chart, and that points to the South Node. Uh, and uh, the movement of Pluto over the South Node in any chart is uh, dramatic, to say the least. Uh, we have Pluto in the South Node in the United States chart this year, and uh, uh, Jupiter is hanging around with Pluto at that point. Uh, I don't think we're going to see some miraculous uh, uplift or improvement uh, in the United States. Uh, it's going to take time. And I think that this year is extremely challenging. Uh, everything we can each do to uh, take care of ourselves and others uh, is uh, extremely important because uh, the United States chart is exceptionally troubling uh, this year. I took a look at other examples of Pluto transiting or moving over that very, very vulnerable south node in a chart. Uh, I looked a, a fair amount at the British chart and uh, interestingly, I noticed that uh, Pluto 
engaged the South Node in the British chart uh, the year of the, the Battle of uh, Waterloo. But I also uh, noticed that uh, when Pluto reached the South Node in the British chart uh, 1569, that triggered or was part of the Northern Rebellion. So we can look at historical cases to get a better understanding of uh, a certain planetary uh, condition uh, such as Pluto in the South Node. But to be honest with you, we know that Pluto transiting the South Node is, is rotten and, and perilous. Uh, so uh, I don't think we need to look at it too much to realise that we have problems. And practically speaking, everything that, that we do, that you do, that I do, to help contain and eliminate the problems uh, the better okay so we need to be on the right side of history uh, we need to embrace this opportunity to become better to create an economy that works for everybody to establish equality uh, to eliminate racism uh, to be far far better than all of that and to really get a grip of the world and that this state we're in with this coronavirus, etc. And there's a tremendous amount going on and we all need to take it seriously and do our bit to uh, solve these problems. I monitor a number of cyclic indices in order to identify periods of stability and crisis. Now, these indices are generally or broadly uh, based upon the principle of Plato's great year. Uh, one of these uh, indices is known uh, as the law of the rhythms of time. It was developed by a gentleman named Claude Gannou. And I want to read you a quote from a Claude Gannou because I think that in this statement he made uh, a very good uh, reference to how this actually works. So let me read you that quote. The stability or instability of the world is directly related to the difference in the sum of the phases of all waxing cycles of the five outer planets and the sum of the phases of waning cycles of planets. Whilst the resultant figure remains positive, the Earth will tend to experience relative stability and a period of evolution. When the resultant figure is negative, the Earth enters a period of crisis and involution. As well as Claude Gano's uh, model, uh, I monitor André Barbeau's cyclical index, uh, as well as uh, the index developed by Henri-Joseph Gouchon, French guy. Uh, but basically, when I analyse these, uh, indices, you see that we are definitely in a troublesome uh, period at the moment. We're in a, a trough. Uh, so in those uh, indices, we monitor the peaks and the troughs. We're in a trough at the moment. In Andre Barbo's uh, cyclical index, uh, troughs uh, coincided with uh, major events like World War One, World War Two, the Korean War, uh, the Iran-Iraq War, Second Cold War, Gulf War, 9-11, and corresponding uh, economic crises. Solar astronomers track solar activity by counting sunspots. Peaks and troughs in the sunspot cycle indicate extremes and turning points on Earth. New sunspots 
uh, plus the biggest solar flare since 2017 may indicate that the sun has reached an extreme and is waking up from a period of relative inactivity. And this is another sign that we must proactively face and work through the challenges that we are experiencing at the moment and remembering that opportunities lie within those challenges if only we can get it right. If you receive my email updates you will have read my comments about the recent summer solstice June 20th 5.44 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Remember that the summer solstice is a very important event. When the sun reaches his strongest position of the year far north of the equator, this is the longest day. This is when the sun god Apollo rides his golden chariot into the sign of the zodiac Cancer each year. And at the same time, the sun then commences his retreat like a crap. The summer solstice is when the sun sets at the peak or between the peaks of the Great Pyramids at Giza. It's the day that the sun strikes the heel stone of Stonehenge. And it's the day that the Earth's North Pole reaches its maximum tilt towards the sun. Father Christmas visits six months later to describe the celestial dynamics at that time, just as the planetary conditions always describe what's occurring and what we're working with. But remembering that the summer solstice is the most powerful day of the year, uh, we need to bear in mind that the summer solstice this year uh, coincided with a solar eclipse. So let me explain this. Just to give you an idea of how rare these future uh, summer solstice eclipses are, uh, they will occur again in 2039, 2058 and 2373. An eclipse eliminates light, disconnecting the earth and everything on it from its source of life, right? An eclipse is not a good thing. Now always remember that an eclipse is an omen relating to future events uh, when that eclipse point is triggered. But summer solstice eclipses, an elimination of light at that very moment when we rejoice in the uh, greatness of the light, the peak in the light. I looked back and found that these very rare summer solstice eclipses did coincide with World War One, World War Two, uh, the Vietnam War. Uh, and 9-11 uh, in fact. These rare summer solstice eclipses also uh, coincided with the re with recessions, so the recession of World War One, World War II's recession, the recession of uh, Vietnam, the Vietnam War, the mid-1970s recession, the 1982 recession and the recession uh, pursuant to the 9-11 terrorist attack in New York. Now, to be practical about this, check your chart. Uh, the eclipse point is zero degrees of Cancer. So if you have a planet or a power point in your natal chart or your progressed chart, 
uh, at the very beginning of the sign cancer you want to understand what that planet or point is associated with in your chart and then you want to remedy nurture and secure that area of your chart your life let's take a look at the planetary conditions for july but in a little more detail first of all mars is now in aries mars rules the sign of aries so he's at home in his own sign of the zodiac planets like to be under their own sign because they answer to themselves and they can do what they really feel inclined to do i do feel quite strongly that mars's movement into aries facilitates the spread of the coronavirus mars is the ruler of viruses when mars was in capricorn earlier this year we saw a significant or huge spread in the virus that's because capricorn is mars's sign of exaltation and when a planet is in its sign of exaltation it can really do a number but mars in aries now is very very competent as well and we need to take this situation uh, with the coronavirus very seriously i will speak about mars and some dates that i'm particularly aware of but i'll do that under a couple of separate slides the full moon this month is july 4th 5th at 13 degrees of capricorn you probably know that the new moon the beginning of the lunar cycle is considered benefic positive the full moon is considered malefic okay that's why we have all these myths and about uh, the full moon werewolves etc but the full moon is discordant so we have to be careful we should be careful at the time of any full moon i say to everybody slow down a little be aware of your blind spots and risks at the time of the full moon as, as the full moon approaches because the full moon can trigger underlying discord the moon will be in capricorn as i said this month for the full moon on the 4th 5th and uh, unfortunately the moon does not like being in capricorn at all so it's a challenging full moon stay out of trouble avoid risks also it seems that this full moon in capricorn indicates a further stimulation of all these issues with jupiter and pluto that we've been exploring together let's have a think about mercury we begin the month with mercury retrograde in cancer it's not a great problem in itself i think that people generalize too much about retrogradation uh, being honest retrogradation is an impediment for a planet a planet's dignity or quality deteriorates when it's retrograde although it can be very very useful for certain things but retrogradation is not the worst impediment by any means a significant problem or impediment for a planet is when it gets too close to the sun zodiacally because that really makes the planet and everything it rules deteriorate and basically the first couple of days or so of july mercury is very close to the sun so we do need to be careful with all matters of mercury uh, travel communication uh, legal agreements negotiation children etc uh, etc et let's be careful there knowing that mercury is in particularly poor condition so close to the sun a far worse impediment for a planet than retrogradation is station so a planet really slows down zodiacally when it's about to change direction 
and that is a, a particularly challenging uh, point. So we need to be careful knowing that Mercury will be stationed on the 12th and the 13th of July. So drive really carefully, be careful what you do, and if you know your chart well, you will be able to calculate what Mercury is responsible for or indicates in your life. Now, Mercury does go direct on the 12th of July, but prior to that, between the 6th and the 9th, or including the 6th through the 9th, uh, Mercury will be in a, a discordant aspect to Mars. That's very accident prone, very uh, conflict prone, etc. So we've got to be very careful there also, uh, the 6th, 7th, 8th and 9th. And again, if you know what Mercury rules in your chart, and you can look at where transiting Mercury will be positioned in your chart, you can figure out what in your life is in scope or what you would need to be careful with. But everybody needs to be careful uh, when Mercury is in a discordant aspect to Mars, okay? Because Mars is moving direct in his own sign of Aries, but Mercury is back and forth uh, here in the sign Cancer, we have another discordant or conflicted aspect between Mercury and Mars on the 27th, so be very careful with that as well. The Sun will oppose Jupiter on the 14th. This happens once a year, but it's a classic tension because the major benefic Jupiter is on one side of the zodiac and the Sun is opposing that point. So we have to be careful with that and uh, we should be careful with authority figures, right? So it's not the day to have a go at your boss. It's not the day to uh, be difficult with a police officer that stops you uh, when you're driving down the highway or something like that. Then on the 15th, the sun will oppose Pluto. Again, that happens every year, but it's an indication of uh, disagreements, disputes, conflict, uh, and problems, tensions with leadership, leaders, reputations, authority figures. I think the, the bright point or the, the po really positive thing uh, this month is that at least we have uh, a new moon in Cancer. We have a beautiful new moon in Cancer, the 20th. Uh, the moon rules Cancer, so it's an especially positive uh, new moon, but it doesn't take away everything else that's occurring and I'll be taking you through some specific comments about uh, Donald Trump, the United States charts and the movement of Mars specifically in just a moment. Let's take a look at the chart for the USA. I'm really concerned about astrological conditions the last day of July and the first couple of days or so of August. Uh, because that is when Mercury up in the sky uh, will move through an opposition to Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn. And uh, well, that's the, the, the peak of the opposition. But my concern is that this really flares up dramatically in the United States chart and uh, may well uh, indicate uh, increased tensions uh, and escalations. We need to remember that Mercury in the United States chart rules enemies and I'm concerned to see that these challenging astrological conditions late July, early August mesh unfavorably with Donald Trump's chart but also with uh, charts for uh, the president of China, Xi, and a uh, Putin in Russia. The middle of August is extremely concerning as well by the look of it. Uh, this is the United States Sibley chart and uh, here in the middle of August, this is the chart for the 15th, uh, you can see that Mars up in the sky there at 23 degrees of Aries reaches his uh, 90 degree angle, his discordant aspect 
to Pluto up in the sky and Saturn it involves Jupiter and in the United States chart these planets are straddled around the moon in the south node uh, Pluto in the south node etc uh, Mars also in Aries in the the coming uh, months actually conflicts with natal Saturn and progressed Mars in the United States charts and this is another reason why I'm extremely concerned about the conditions and uh, I'm concerned about the potential for conflict again given all of this activity with uh, Pluto Jupiter uh, Mars check your chart have a look to see if you have a planet or a power point at 24 degrees of uh, Capricorn uh, Cancer uh, Aries or Libra and if you do determine what those points are associated with or if that if it's a planet what that planet is responsible for in your chart I will make a couple of uh, comments at this point about uh, Donald Trump and specifically his unplanned visit to the hospital in November last year plus his strange walk at the recent uh, West Point visit this is Trump's chart for June the 13th uh, when he visited West Point and seemed to struggle uh, walking down a ramp uh, he said that the ramp was slippery because of the rain but I, I don't think he had checked the forecast because it hadn't rained but I want you to see in his chart that he has health problems I flagged this previously I think that the first time I went into any detail about Trump's health was my June Outlook report but here if we look at June the 13th when he was at West Point uh, we see that Neptune up in the sky is in a 90 degree angle to the Sun in Donald Trump's natal chart now a 90 degree angle is a discordant aspect this is unfavorable and his son is especially important uh, because it's the ruler of his body if Neptune is in this discordant aspect to Donald Trump's natal son ruler of his body there's something wrong with his health and one of the issues with Neptune is lack of visibility so things get very foggy where Neptune's concerned and we may not realize that there's a problem sometimes even a, a physician can miss a problem or misdiagnose a problem with this kind of aspect so also Donald Trump's progressed Uranus is on top of his natal Sun uh, this not only makes him more unpredictable and quirky than ever but it's a strong indication that there's an irregularity with his heart okay now the day of this West Point episode Mars up in the sky was at the same point in as Neptune and they were both in a discordant aspect an exact 90 degree angle to Donald Trump's natal Sun natal North node progressed Uranus and the Sun up in the sky was also in Gemini because it was the day after his birthday or the day before his birthday sorry so he has a problem with his health and I'm pretty sure he has a problem with his heart I did say that him uh, just randomly taking uh, that medication uh, because of coronavirus was a dreadful idea and I'm pretty sure that he did damage to his body and his heart specifically when he chose to do that this is Trump's chart for November 16th last year when he had that unscheduled uh, doctor's visit or hospital visit I can't remember which it was but there was quite a lot about that in the media obviously because people were questioning his health again 
and the sun was at 24 degrees of Scorpio that day in a discordant aspect to Trump's Mars and there are other indications in this chart of health issues again I would put my money on it being his heart to be quite honest remembering that Jupiter is abundant and that he is in poor condition at the same point in the zodiac as Pluto and bearing in mind that this is occurring in the south node of the United States chart we should think about where the money is going and we should think about corruption we should really look at what's really happening I was looking at the recent US bailout if you remember in 2008 one of the problems we discovered was a lack of reserves the banks did not have uh, sufficient reserves that's why many countries including the United States legislated to ensure that banks had sufficient financial reserves as part of the recent uh, act in the United States the bailout program this reserve requirement for banks was eliminated they were also given loans interest free renewable on a day-to-day -day basis just roll it over no strings attached all right no requirement to uh, offer loans to small business or medium-sized businesses no requirement to reduce credit card interest rates or to uh, write off uh, mortgages that were underwater I mean by comparison Canada halved interest rates on credit cards and in fact in April in the United States a miserly half percentage point was shaved off the average credit card rate to 20.15 percent so the banks are uh, experiencing a huge windfall uh, on top of massive tax cuts in 2019 in the United States and this whole Jupiter Pluto Capricorn South node situation will also bring up a big debate about where our money goes slow moving Neptune is in a discordant aspect to the ruler of real estate and real estate finances in the United States Sibley chart this indicates that we may not fully understand the status quo and I fail to see how the real estate market could not be dramatically affected by our current circumstances I was taking a look at the crown territories uh, I looked at Great Britain and Australia uh, particularly and I want to mention that it seems there's something in the pipeline between Britain and Australia uh, it may well involve other crown territories uh, uh, but I think that there's something in the pipeline in the form of some economic collaboration uh, or maybe free market collaboration something like that maybe uh, relaxation in movements and uh, visas uh, between the UK Australia and other crown territories so it'd be interesting to see uh, what comes up there I would say that it's something that's likely to surface as we get into early 2021 if you would like to receive my email updates including my uh, lunar prompting email series uh, then uh, just uh, sign up on my website it's stephenframpton 
www.ethicalcoachingcoach.com. If you have any problems with that, you can email my office, inquiries at stephenframpton.com. All of that information is free, and I think that you will find it extremely useful. I want to thank you for listening to my Outlook report. I wish you the very best for July and always. I do still have a service called Monthly Monitoring. Um, basically, uh, for the Monthly Monitoring service, uh, you pay $75 a month and you receive a 30-minute audio file in which I scrutinize your charts, giving you the highlights and the uh, lookouts for the month ahead. If you're interested in that service, uh, please again feel free to email my office, inquiries at stephenframpton.com. If you would like to make an appointment with me, please visit my website, stephenframpton.com. Thank you.